because I try first of all to conciliate the situation in any way at all. A senior Tory backbencher urged him to keep quiet. I think it really is disgraceful for a former Prime Minister who had his chance to be Prime Minister and leader of the party to be effectively seeking to wreck his successor and all her policies. I think, sadly, Mr Heath's conduct is worse than what we'd expect from the most irresponsible backbencher. But Mrs Thatcher's not likely to be too worried by Mr Heath's remarks, nor, it seems, by other criticism of her leadership. As speculation about the date of the next general election increases, Mrs Thatcher says in an interview in tomorrow's Woman's Own that she'll certainly go on for the next election and will even take a look at the one after that. Jackie Ashley, ITN, Westminster. Police fear that the craze for acid house parties is increasing in popularity with much younger teenagers taking part. More than 200 people, many of them as young as 15, were arrested after police in Wakefield moved in to break up a party there. Another 700 people were questioned. A quantity of drugs was seized during the police operation. Beside the River Calder, on a narrow towpath, more than a thousand young people had crowded under a motorway bridge waiting for the party to begin. But with local residents complaining that 300 abandoned cars were blocking their roads, the police moved in. As arrests were made and a substantial quantity of drugs seized, it emerged some of the partygoers were no older than 15. We had a large number of teenagers at this uh, party last night. Uh, drugs freely available to them, exposed to drugs, uh, and one person, just one person, introduced to the evils of drugs is one too many. The choice of location for the party beside a river, a railway and a busy road could say the police have had tragic consequences, but those who attended deny they were in any danger. It's in the open air though, I mean, people want, just want to dance and have a good time, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong in that. What, what's the danger? A series of police raids last year has clearly failed to deter the organisers of large-scale acid house parties. This latest clampdown, with more than 900 people either arrested or questioned, is one of the biggest yet. Senior officers say with teenagers as young as 15 at risk from drink, drugs and a dangerous location, they won't hesitate in taking a tough line. Simon Harris, ITN, Wakefield. Relief workers in Ohio are coordinating an emergency relief operation for survivors of Thursday's flooding in the United States. Volunteers are manning food distribution centers in the village of Shadyside in Belmont County until services can be restored. Hundreds of police and army reservists using sniffer dogs have joined in the search for over 30 people reported missing. 15 people died after floodwaters swept away homes, cars and lorries. Now with news of Ireland's progress in the World Cup and the rest of the day's sport, here's Giles Smith. Jack Charlton's Republic of Ireland today drew nil-nil with Egypt, the alleged minnows of the group that includes England. They should have won, but the result means the group is still wide open, all four teams having the same number of points and goals. That's it in alphabetical order. If the last two games are draws, the two or three teams to go through will be decided by the drawing of lots. The Irish in white shirts relied on their normal high ball tactics, but their only real chance in the first half fell to Cascarino. His effort, though, was easily dealt with by the Egyptian keeper. Egypt didn't have a shot on goal all match. Ireland's best chance, made by Sheedy, fell to Houghton, but again, the keeper was up to it. Their last chance fell to Staunton, but his effort was just wide. Tonight's other results, Belgium 3, Uruguay 1, Belgium go through, and Spain 3, South Korea 1. In motor racing, Jaguar took the first two places in the Le Mans 24-hour race for the second time in three years. The two British cars fought off the challenge of Porsche and Nissan to dominate the race just six years after the company's return to the sport. An estimated 50,000 British spectators were among a quarter of a million at the track to see the triumph of Nielsen, Cobb and Brundle in the winning car. In tennis, Ivan Lendl gave himself a huge boost for Wimbledon the week after next when he comprehensively beat Boris Becker in the final of the Stella Artois tournament in London, 6-3, 6-2. It's the first time he'd ever beaten the German on a grass court. Lendl hasn't played on anything but grass for two months in his preparation to win Wimbledon at last. Today he was superb, dismissing Becker 6-3 in the first set. Becker wants a fourth Wimbledon to catch up with Borg's five. In the second set, he began to show his grass court skills, including the famous dive. But it wasn't enough. Lendl has clearly learned to play on grass. Wimbledon, the one prize that's eluded the world number one, is firmly in his sights this year. 
Boxing and Mike Tyson had a successful return to the ring in his quest to regain the World Heavyweight Championship, knocking out James Tillman in the first round in Las Vegas. Just for a moment, Tillman in the white shorts threatened a Buster Douglas-style upset as he rocked Tyson with a right in the first half minute. But it wasn't to last. That was Tillman's last shot as a completely different Tyson from the Douglas fight moved in for the kill. Set up and just throw bombs. And a right hand sends Tillman down! The end came in just over two and a half minutes. Tillman couldn't get up, but was he a good enough opponent? When people tell me that this guy's going to be a pushover, that's when I worry. That's when I worry. Like, Buster Douglas wasn't supposed to be a pushover. Not making a big issue of it. By no doubt, I'm the best fighter in the universe, and I'm coming back to regain the title. Happily, Tillman recovered. Tyson is clearly back on the championship trail, though he may have to wait up to a year for a crack at Douglas. Finally, there's a happy ending for one player in one of the least fancied teams in the World Cup. United Arab Emirates got a consolation goal in their 5-1 defeat by favourites West Germany. But when Kalal Ishmael scored, he got more than his teammates' congratulations. His local car dealer is giving him a brand new Rolls Royce. Ishmael called it the greatest goal of his life. And that is it. Good night. <laughs>